Let's go to the Word of God. Book of Acts chapter 2 verse 47. This is a powerful scripture. Praising God and have favor with all the people. And the Lord add to the church daily just as you be saved. In the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you, or unto thee, the key of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind in the earth shall be bound in the heaven. And whatever shall loose in the earth shall be loose in heaven. This is the two scriptures tied together for the church. And I really want to try to bring something to your attention today. Somebody say amen. Oh, just lift our hand and let's pray. Father, thank you. Open the roof of this place. Pour down your understanding and wisdom of your word. Saddle this thing with your spirit. And testify your word and witness to your people. Your word to be declared. We're standing in the end time, God. The only thing we have is your word to stand on. And believe what you tell us, God. From the Genesis to Revelation. And we stand as a church. Because you already declared the church. It is the promise. Uh, it is the purpose. It is the way to escape the things in this world. The church is the place we can come together and help one another and stand together and understand what you wanted to say. God, I pray to bless your people here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Before you see them, shake somebody's hand and tell them you look good tonight. Say it like you mean it. So tonight I want to talk to you the subject, praise, bring favor. Praise, bring favor. In the book of Acts chapter 2, it was chapters found in prayer and fasting. It's a chapter where the people was filled with the Holy Ghost, dedicate their life. And they come together to hear the word of God through the mouth uh, of the apostle. The chapter 2 of Acts is that it's a the book or the chapter was found in the prayer and fasting of those people they feel with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. And we know today is our prayer time. I thank God for the man of God to dedicate those three days of prayer and fasting. Somebody say amen. Somebody asked me the other day, why you always like to go to church? I say that's the only thing in the face of, the face of this earth you can call and and learn something uh, and let God speak to you uh, and let the man of God speak the word of God to you. The only place in the world you can find the liberty where Apostle Paul talked about it, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is a liberty. I'm here to tell you church uh, this is our time uh, to get a hold of the word of God. Uh, go to the book of Acts uh, so you can learn, uh, so you can study, so you can see what happened the day of Pentecost. Somebody Say amen. Go to the book of Acts to learn how you feel again with the Holy Ghost and the found favor of the Lord over your life. Go to the book of Acts to learn what the disciple has been teaching and preaching to the church today. Somebody say amen. God told me the other day when I was praying, pastor, in the church, what is wrong with the church? And God spoke to me, uh, the devil want to shut the mouth of the church so they did not hear the voice and the word speak out of their mouth. This is our time, church. It's a time the church rise up and speak the word, exercise the gift. There is a favor is in the church when we praise God. Somebody say amen. I don't shut my mouth when I go out there in the world about God. That's the only thing I know. You can talk about all the stuff, but I don't want to talk about it anymore. Because I'm a changed man. I'm praising God. 
time pleasing God because somewhere God has saved over my life for my commitment, my dedication to give it to him. Somebody say amen. There are people in the world looking for an answer, but the answer is not in the government. The answer is not in the job. The answer is not in the world. The answer they're looking for is in the church because the church is already blessed by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We want to see the church. It's not about numbers. God allowed the devil to improve your mind. Most not that many people come to you. So listen. If you found favor, that's why a mother. If you have praise, that's why a mother. If you have God, that's why a mother. If you have a man of God, he's preaching every time. The time he comes behind that pulpit, that why he's mother. It's not the number. Somebody say amen. The devil trying to put it in our mind because somebody leaves the church. So what? How do you know you save a headache when God makes somebody to leave? Uh, Matt, Pastor, you read the long suffering, the long suffering. We need to prepare the church for the coming of the Lord. That's not only that, we need to prepare the church for the power and the gift is already given to them. Why? How come you sit in the gift if God gave you the Holy Ghost? How come you sit in the chair with the gift supposed to show it up and shaking those things around you and tell the devil no more devil because I'm an overcomer. I'm the one who was raised by favor because I know how to praise God. Today, there's a friend of mine is going through some physical thing. They went to the doctor. They used to preach about healing the little one. But when those things arise in him, it's hard to figure it out. Somebody say, man. So he said, Brother Laulu, I know you for many, many years. Help me out and say, no, the only thing you got to do, go back to the basic. Open the book of Acts and read it. What happened in that day of Pentecost? When they are in the upper room, they come with one mind and one accord. And they have a desire. They have a hungry for their heart to see the power of God. They read about the prophecy. They read about the letter of the Bible. They read about the Lord. But what they hungry for? Something different than the prophecy. Something different than the letter of the Bible. Something different than just a story. But there was something different in the day of Pentecost. When they in the upper room, they feel something they already promised them. In the last day, I will pour out my spirit and I'll fill. I come here because I already tell the devil. I'm going to be your worst nightmare. Every time I leave my home, I remind the devil. Every time I get in my truck, I remind the devil. Oh, no. There is nothing in this man. You're going to be tricked or anything. Because this is a nightmare for your life or spirit. But when I come to church, I'm ready to go and praise God and worship God. I forget the thing is going on today, but I want to be in the house of God. Do you know God see everything in your mind? And I hope your mind is pure tonight. What is in your minds out of the place? What's wonder who hate you today? What's wonder who talked to you on the phone in the bad news? Listen, the only way you can overcome that thing 
go back to the book of Acts chapter 2. They say when they're in the upper room, they start praying. They start fasting. They start dedicating their life for God. And I'm going to tell you something. This gospel, this truth we preach about it, is only working for those who are hungry. This thing we preach about it, it's only work for those that are hungry. They're not work for lukewarm people. They're not work for unfaithful people. They're not work for people that compromise it. Somebody say amen. It's just a good word for compromise it. You got to understand what but this gospel is only work for those that are hungry for something is different everyday life. There's something is different in your life. Somebody say amen. Did you ever wake up with a bad phone call? <laughs> Woo. Do you want me to help you out that phone call? Just shut the phone and get praise God. Worship God first. Pastor, I was raised in the apostolic movement. They told me, when you have something, you need to take care of them, go pray. I don't need to approach the pastor first. I call the God first. Because when I call there, God's going to speak to the man of God. And he's going to give me a right direction. But if you go to him first, guess what happens? You're going to be rebuked. Because they see you all over the place. Somebody say amen. See, the church need to rise up and understand. Praise is bringing favor in your life or everything is going on in your life. When you start praising, it's a testimony. God do something for you. So I, man, I got blessed. I took the mail box and I got a thousand dollars. So that's the testimony. You start praising God for a thousand dollars. That's what praise is. Something you exciting about it. The church, it kept me exciting. Every time Wednesday coming, I cannot wait to praise God some more because Wednesday is coming. Or anything is involving the church, I praise God because that's the only thing I know of them. It's because there is a testimony. Somebody says, I'm not waiting until your brother Carl blessing me a Burger King. I'm praising God now. Because I know he in his heart and his heart. If you want to start using up, I know when I'm in his presence, he's going to buy me. A... Somebody say amen. <laughs> so praise is coming from the testimony. Something was happening in your life. And you start great praising. Somebody say amen. The reason sometimes, the reason why you're not praising God, because there's nothing happening in your life. Same Sunday, pastor standing here, preaching his heart out. I'm not trying to make it fun. In fact, I'm just trying to give you an example. And you know what that man's going? They're preaching to the people. And the same Sunday morning, and you show up on Wednesday, it's the same thing. You pick it up before you leave the church. Why is it? The book of Acts tells us how exciting the people is. It's the book of Acts tells us they have all these things. They sell everything and they bring it to the feet of the disciple. Why they do that? Because they know the apostle have favor. Of God. When you have somebody have favor, you need to get connected with that person. Don't hang around with the hey who out there. Only thing they're talking, running down the church. Listen, if somebody's running down a church, you need to rebuke it. You talk to my church that way, there's no room for that. You talk to me, you talk bad about my pastor, my pastor's wife, you talking to the wrong person because I know what the word of God. You talk bad about my brothers and my sister, they go in the same church, you asking the wrong thing. Or somebody say amen, the church need to rise up and let the devil know we still come in here and praise God. Praise, 
bring favor. And what favor? It's a wisdom and understanding. That's why favor is a pound of people. Because when you have favor, you should have wisdom and understanding because God's not just giving you something and you're going to be abuse it. Somebody say amen. Favor come from the word prophetic. The man of God speak the word and create an atmosphere of favor in people's life. Or your parents, your parents. Somebody teach you, show you good things. This generation today, oh boy, you got to have some earplugs around you. Because you try to teach them, try to help them, they're going to come from way on the other side of Google Mountain. And there's no conversation. You gotta protect that favor if you have favor in your life. Pastor, I mean, I listened to the message you preached last Wednesday. And what did he preach? He's preaching favor over the people of God. Because when you have favor, you have power. When you have favor, you have blessing. When you have favor, you have wisdom. When you have favor, you have knowledge. You ever around with people that make mistakes and they always apologize? They make a mistake. And they're always sorry. I'm not trying to put that down. But if you have favor, you should be never exercise what you keep doing in every day. Somebody say amen. In the book of Psalm, teach us how to up, uplift ourselves, motivate ourselves, encourage ourselves, how to praise God. And when they come in the book of Acts, they tell us when the Holy Ghost coming inside of us. Can I tell you something? <laughs> God just uh, speaking to me today. Remind the people in the Old Testament, He was around the people, was not in the people. In our generation, He's not only around us, but he's coming in us. And the Old Testament, if you study the whole book of the Old Testament, a lot of those prophets, a lot of those men of God, desire want to be in this generation. Because this generation have a blessing and a favor of God over them. Because the Holy Ghost sent it and filled them up. That is the reason why the book of Acts, people was exciting. Because they feel something different. But if we not exercise it, that same devil is going to hammer you, is sitting next to you in a church. <laughs> Somebody say amen. So God is looking for a church of end time. And I'm going to share this. I'm almost done. Oh, I love this. Somebody say amen. Listen, I'm not a perfect man. I never claim I'm a perfect person. I'm claiming I'm blessed. Do you know what blessed means? Happy. If you study what blessing means, it's happy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So you spend a lot of energy of the thing is not make you Happy or blessed. Because somebody make it wrong. I see not taste good in your mouth. It's not going to give you an excuse to have a bad day. <laughs> somebody say amen. Let's move on. Before. This is what God is saying in the book of Luke. Chapter 1, verse 77. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sin. So when God forgives our sin, they give you favor. They give you the opportunity to receive him as a spirit. I told somebody the other day, he's always cussing a lot of bad words. I say, I can tell you a devil. And he looked at me, well, why are you saying that? Because that language come out of your mouth is a devil's language. And you look at me and say, you think so? No, I know so. And I'm glad you're not speaking that language around my boy or anybody in the church. Because I will put the devil in his place. 
how in the world people speaking something, the mouth should be holy and pure because you are magnified the Lord. You are worshiped God. You are praising God when you come to church. And this devil want to cast him like, are you serious? I walk in my truck, you get the duct tape, put it in your mouth so that way you learn how to not talk like that. No, I'm serious because you don't need to keep room to the devil anymore. We have a church in need to move forward. Somebody say amen. We have a service. We need to start making some phone call. Start witness. Turn the city upside down. Somebody say amen. This is our time. Start a witness to somebody else. Don't look at somebody's church. I don't care what they do. They need to connect yourself with the vision of the pastor and the church. So we can see this church. Fill them up. So we can build another building. Or move in the next. You level. Somebody say amen. I'm not going to stay old and not see what God is trying to do. Somebody say amen. Oh, the devil boy. We don't want them to move on and then I see nothing going on. It's time for the church to found favor of God and move witness to somebody. Now I'm going to close with this. You know what's going on in America right now? The devil used America to print out money to help the devil out. I follow a lot of this stuff a long time. When America start approve about a portion, I would say we in trouble. I'm saying is when they approve the care, merits, and all that stuff, we in trouble. We all have a right mind to stand in the word of God. God never make a, a man to another man or a woman and a woman. God make a man and a woman to stand for the word of God. The devil is a liar. Somebody say amen. And they try to use the word love. You gotta love them because they are sold. Listen, sometimes love take by force. Somebody say amen. But don't let the devil portray us. Oh, come on. Somebody say amen. Oh, they related to us. No, they related to you. But that's not mean you're going to compromise the word of God. America is in a bad, bad trouble. The only way they save America right now is the church. Nothing else. It's the church. So, <laughs> don't use your love your puppy love for somebody that's not live for God. Shaking your hand, put them in the back, I'm praying for you. Walk away, but don't hang around with them. Because they were going to take you out. And when they tra track you out, you lost your place. When they sidetrack you, you're going to lose your place. And when you try to tell you something, painting something in your mind, it's okay, the pastor understand if we miss one service. Oh, he's, he's, he's a nice man. Listen, I was raised. You gotta show up no matter what takes place. If you have a sickness, come on, give me We gotta cast that devil out. I see bone cracking. I see knees straighten up. I see tongue cracking when they come to the church. But if you want to believe it, that's your choice. I'm just telling you. We need to live in a life where the apostle teach the church. We need to rise up and understand the time we live in today. Somebody say amen. The parents, uh, the parents, uh, they, they, they blame their, their kids. The kids blame their parents. Now the world uh, or your friend blame the church. <laughs> Somebody say amen. And I'm going to finish with this. There is a key of the church and need to stand and believe in it. And this is the key. Fill your cup up with the Holy Ghost every time. Make sure you have that Holy Ghost perfect inside of you. 
Somebody say, man, make sure you have that Holy Ghost to go with you everywhere you're going. If you don't have it and you don't understand why you don't have it, give about five minutes with the pastor. You already know. He's just tell you about two seconds. You understand what it is. Somebody say, man, filling up your cup with the Holy Ghost and let it running over. Somebody say amen. Because if your cup is not running over, you're going to lose your praise. You're going to lose everything you work hard for. Somebody say amen. It should be never lost a praise. I see people supposed to be coming to church. I'm really going to the house of the Lord. Praise God and worship God. But we come here and they say, hey, Erica, you have keys. Hey, 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 brother Christian, you always jumping. But what are you singing? Those are questions that people lukewarm. Those are questions that people don't understand about praise. Somebody say, man, we should become here fired up. And if you're not fired up, there's a key for this. <laughs> the pastor already said that. Show up in prayer first. In Modesto, California, where Pastor Keys, uh, they have a great revival. You know what that man look in the pulpit and say, if anybody is not ready for this service, make your way to the prayer room and pray before you come in. Uh, because we need everybody connected with faith. Uh, we need everybody filled with the cup. Uh, when they come into the house of God, there are some people, they're going through some sickness. We need our faith that fill them up in the Holy Ghost. So we can see them get delivered and healed. Church, feel your cup off running over in the Holy Ghost. This little mind here, well, I have a strong mind. Trust me. I have some stubborn inside of this mind. They try to fight in me. And the Holy Ghost is jumping up and move that stubbornness out of my mind. Or this flash. I mean, I'm going to repent today. I feel, feel sorry for that horse. 289 pounds and that horse. He's a big horse. He's almost go down and say, horse, come on. <laughs> we don't need to go down. <laughs> Somebody say amen. And I was excited to get in that horse huh? because I love to ride horse. Huh? But when I had an opportunity, I'm going to have my liberty. I know it's not me. It's the Holy Ghost in me keep that horse straight up. Because they want me to bless the horse before they go to race. I guess they're making money and everything. So, well, I got to ride it. Somebody say, man. <laughs> See, God knows how to set the devil to fulfill your need. He, God's good for that. He used the devil to be your servant. Somebody say, man. You ever seen the restaurant and you never even know idea who is that person that bless you? <laughs> Somebody say amen. Well, church, let's rise up with the praise. Bring that favor. The disciple was excited about it, but I still believe uh, the Holy Ghost uh, is still moving in this church. Uh, no matter how many people here, the Holy Ghost is still moving. Come up here, Sister Erica, because the pastor's going to come and, and bail me up. <laughs> Somebody say amen. In the same chapter of book of Luke, verse 16, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat, therefore, until to fulfill the kingdom of God. That's crazy scripture. What do you mean? That's not going to work for me on Sunday night. I got to go to Freddy. What are you talking about? The pastor invited me to their house. <laughs> Somebody say, man. You see, that's my witness is to fear these guys. But I got to look at the scripture. Somebody say, man. God want to do something for this church. So I want to encourage you. Point your finger to the devil and tell him, no more. I'm moving forward. I, I want to do something for this church. We want to win in soul. Witness. 
You know those people, they come visit, they have a phone number, call them out. We miss you. I can't wait to see you. I believe in my heart, and I know the pastor believed too, there is an angel. The ministry of angel is fixing to show up in this church to appeal us together. Oh, come on, let's stand in our feet tonight. Come on, praising God, bring favor.